Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Audrey McLaughlin and Sheila Copps. This I really wondered. You're in the house. It's vicious. People are mean to each other. Uh, they are trying to say, uh, you should lose your job and I should get it. Right. Can you walk out and say, oh, hi, Sheila, how you doing? I mean, can you, can you have that kind of camaraderie outside of there, or is it just got to be done the way it's got to be done? I think we can walk out and, uh, and be pleasant. And, but you know, it's an adversarial system. And in the House of Commons, uh, you know, we put forward our point of view. Yeah. yeah. I think it, a lot of it depends on the individuals. There are some really, actually excellent individuals on the other side of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're not some of them are here tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you're not supposed to let us know who they are, right? No, no. no. I, I think you can say who the yeah. who peop people are nice. I mean, this. Okay, I have to tell you this story. All right. And I hope John Crosby is listening, <laughs> because this is not an excellent story. And you know, people say, "Oh, John Crosby is such a wonderful guy." I was eight and a half months pregnant. His office was across from mine. I was on my way to say, I got to deliver this baby. And I stepped into the elevator, and John looked at me, and he looked at my protruding belly, and he said, well, Sheila, I suppose this is about time that you start getting bitchy. Well, I mean, more bitchy. <laughs> and I just sort of looked at him, and I said, you know me, John, I'm always sweet, never bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> just walked off. Now, that is not a nice story. And the stories about him being such a sweet guy they ain't true. No. Now, you, you can invite him on the show next week to rebut, right, Ralph? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I guess there'll be that mud wrestling thing yeah. next week. Which, yeah. rebut, and it'll be rebut. me and John for having you on, so I really appreciate that. That's two out of three falls. Um, one of the things I wonder is, is whether or not women are changing that adversarial thing. Uh, are women changing politics, or are politics changing the women that get into them? Well, if, I don't speak for myself, but I think that women can change politics. We don't have to uh, fit into a system that doesn't work very well. We can change the system, and that's why I'm here. Well, I think it's a bit of both. I think it's a bit of both because I think I don't apologize for being aggressive. I don't think it's just a characteristic of men. I think that the good things that women can bring to politics also can help soften men and vice versa. It's got to be a shared thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why um, there are some things that we can do to change the system and we can also allow ourselves to be who we are without being afraid of being labeled shrill. I mean, yeah. how many men do you know who are shrill? <laughs> right. I'm just trying to see if you're all women applauding and the men going, <laughs> clap. That's right. Uh, all right. I hear that, but I also hear a lot from, from women that there, there is a need for, uh, let's just knock this off. Because I think most Canadians are really embarrassed about what they see a question period now. I, I think they watch it and just think, this truly can't be the way it should go. You know? So. Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you get everybody to just sort of cut the crap and, and, and actually try dealing with things in a consensual manner that if somebody from another party actually had a good idea, somebody could get up and go, good idea. I mean, how do we get out of this game of, what, you know, what team you're on and what jersey you're wearing? You know, I think part of it, frankly, is the media. I mean, the media, you know, puts on the smart-ass comments. And the media looks for the conflict. And when you have a reason debate, and you have some substance, it's pretty hard to, to get any publicity about that or for anybody to know that you actually did that. Uh -huh. And I don't blame all of the media in that. I mean, I think that's part of the way it is now that uh, politics has become theater in some senses. But I think we can change it by really bringing some respect back to politics. And uh, we change it by our own behavior, really. Um, I'd like to say I don't think it's an issue of behavior. I think it's an issue of the capacity to share power. And as long as you have a government, and I don't care who the government is, where all the decisions rest in the prime minister in a tight cabinet, parliamentary committees right now can make all the suggestions they want. They don't mean much. Yeah. What you have to do is change the system so that, and that's where women, I think we are more able to release power because we've never had it. 
So I think empowerment relates to how we can all sort of share that, and I think that would make Parliament more responsive. All right, let's talk about uh, the obvious, Kim Campbell. Um, yeah? Who's she, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kim who? Yeah. Uh, you know, the way it's going now, it, it, it's looking pretty good and all that, but uh, do you think that this is really... Uh, I mean, just tell me what you think of her. I don't, you know, frankly, I don't know her personally, so I, it would be unfair to me to make any uh, personal comments. What I know is uh, that uh, when we have a debate in the next election, if Kim Campbell wins, we'll have one woman who supported all of Brian Mulroney's policies debating and one woman who opposed all of Brian Mulroney's policies. <laughs> It'd be pretty clear, yeah. seems to me. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Well, I... I don't know if it's sort of along the timetable as you thought, but we're talking now about a leader of the NDP, a deputy leader of the Liberals, and what could be the leader of the Conservative Party, all women. That, uh, is this... Is... <laughs> will of the people. The will of the people. <laughs> yeah, that's how party politics work, the will of the people. Um, but is this a situation that is really representative of the fact that women have a lot more say in politics, or are we still talking about very few women, but they happen to be of a higher profile now? Well, politically right now, for the first time in the history of the country, it's actually a plus to be a woman in mm. politics. It gives you a slight advantage, maybe a 2% advantage, but it is a slight advantage. I think the other thing that you have to look at is, is where we are across the board. We need not only women in leadership roles, but we need, uh, we need more people. You know, we have to look at the House of Commons and see you people reflect it. And that's what it's all about, which is women, men, minorities. Uh, everybody kind of mixed up in there and right now when you turn on your television what you see is basically uh, what we were as a country maybe you know 20 years ago yeah. and I think we just don't need women if I can say I think we need uh, women who uh, believe in equality who uh, don't just believe in getting power for themselves but empowering other men and women and uh, it's not just any women in my view I think it's women who really who really believe in uh, bringing about, as Sheila says, some equality for, uh, for all people. And, and that only makes the lives of men better, it only makes the lives of women better, and I think it makes better decisions in the country. All right. <laughs> Audie McLaughlin and Sheila Potts.